we're back uh, to these coils the CDI and uh, the transistor controlled coils on small engines now I was talking about the uh, the cart engine type coil with the external um, module in it um, that module can be found inside the coil sometimes um, this type of coil with using the like I said using DC component and then a module switching open um, to uh, release the induction into the secondary um, and this type of coil can be found in, in many engines um, chainsaws brush cutters um, and all sorts and sometimes the modules can be inside the coil but they are fairly simple to test okay now if you want to test the uh, ignition coil on pretty much anything um, the rule of thumb is is whatever you're testing is the primary side will be in the order of maybe just under an ohm to um, a couple of ohms three ohms in a car coil so it'll be on the ohm scale and the secondary side will be on the thousands of ohms so the k ohm scale so you know you'll be reading um, values uh, around 10k 5k um, you know you, the, the thing is with the coil is unless you know um, specifically if your coil's not working at all you can say okay well it might be an open circuit or it might be a dead short in the coil so you can test the primary side and if it's got around an ohm or, or, or a couple it's probably okay um, and if you test the secondary and it's a it's a few K or it's 10 K or whatever it is it's probably okay um, the the thing is is that you know if you're testing for a dead coil you're testing for well either primary or secondary that's completely open circuit or shorted okay so you can tell the difference between there but if you've got a coil that's behaving you get a little misfire or something like that or you, you're not quite sure what it is um, it won't rev out and and such then you actually have to really know the specifications of the coil um, so you can get the specs of the coil the primary resistance and the secondary resistance of a coil on pretty much engine, you know, any engine you need to but uh, the rough guidelines is enough to test now on a coil like this to test the uh, primary side can be a little bit difficult um, but all you've got to know is that the wires actually coming out the small um, the smaller wires that are actually coming out if one's going to the module or one's going to the kill switch it's going to be see, going to be seeing whatever voltage is um, expressed on the primary side of the coil so what you can actually do is you can put your meter between there and you can spin the motor over to actually check and make you've actually got some voltage being generated at the primary of the coil in addition to doing a resistance test of the coil primary so if, if you measure the lead here with ohms onto ground you will measure the actual resistance of the of the windings so you can do that without taking the coil out um, you can measure from the spark plug lead end to negative to ground to also measure the secondary windings so you don't need to get inside to actually measure it uh, likewise a kill switch or, or, or an external module um, keeping in mind that these ones don't have a trigger a magnetic trigger to trigger the coil it's done by the actual external module as I explained in earlier videos uh, covering a points eliminator circuit essentially now if you've got points in a really old one you can buy one of these and plug them in and they're on the 10 20 dollars then they're peanuts um, but keep in mind um, when you're testing coils that if it's you know if it's a, if it's a non-runner a no spark then you might be able to test it and you can test the ohm side of the primary and the ohm side of the secondary without taking it apart just by back probing these the, the, the small wire lead to ground and then you can also put a voltmeter on here to ground and you can spin it over and you can actually see if you've got any primary voltage being generated and if you have then then that's fine but it's when you've got a, a, a problem coil that the engine's running but the coil's not performing as it should to peak that you really need to know the proper resistance values to check um, the other thing with coils when you're testing coils you might be given a spec that's hot or cold um, assume it's cold okay and test it and if you've got a, as I said a poor running coil that's still running but it's not as as as, as expected um, then run the engine and heat the coil up okay until it starts running badly and then measure the resist resistance there 
because another mode of breakdown with a, with a coil is, is that it starts breaking down in the resistance values when it actually heats up and then it starts performing badly, whereas when it's cold, it's working fine. So that's another way that a coil will break down. Um, so when you're testing, you know, simple engines, your brush cutter or whatever, these are the tests to do. And then if it's running badly and you haven't got the resistance values, um, at least, you know, test it cold and test it hot. And you might see some wild swing of the, the, the secondary uh, resistance may go, uh, you know, might start at 10K and it's got one or, one, one or thereabouts ohms on the primary and you heat the coil up and suddenly, you know, the, the primary might change a little bit. It will with heat, of course, but the secondary might swing out to like 20K and you know there's something not quite right there. So you uh, may need to um, either get the specs or get another coil at that rate, or assume that it's it's the coil. But unless it's out of the ballpark too far, um, you can pretty much assume the coil's working and sparking, and it may not be the spark, and it may not be the ignition. Um, also keep in mind some of these coils have got things like rev limiters in them, like in chainsaws, okay? So if you've got a chainsaw or engine that, um, that won't rev, um, that can be fuel, okay? That can be other reasons. But it can also be the fact that there's a there's a defective rev, rev limiter in the uh, actual coil, um, and you won't know until you actually identify what coil is and the test procedures. As for test procedures on any of the ignition systems, um, the other part of it is the actual charge coils and the trigger coils that you find on on, on other systems that have have those that use a trigger coil instead of a, an external box to uh, trigger it. Um, and again, there are winding with the resistance. You can use an ohm meter across the actual trigger coils. These types of trigger coils are just a magnet flowing past a winding, so they're not a Hall effect sensor or anything like that. And you can just test the resistance to see if they're actually um, the windings are not short at a open circuit. And likewise, you can put a voltmeter on it, and you can actually test um, um, spin it over and actually see that if you're getting any magnetic pulse or a voltage pulse coming out of your pulse coil. So they're not too hard to actually test um, to see if they're basically working. Uh, when it comes to CDI, it's a little bit more complex, but just keep in mind that if you're testing these systems on these ones, you know, you're testing for a DC component um, to come out of there. On a CDI, you're testing for an AC component to be coming out. So you've got to identify which wires are which actually on the CDI box. So that makes it a little bit more complex. But on a CDI, again with the coils, primary resistance, secondary resistance. Um, when testing twin lead coils like this, okay, twin uh, wasted spark system coils like this, if you had a look at the previous two videos ago, I think... Um, so uh, 26 or 27 thereabouts um, I showed you the wiring diagram the actual wiring diagram for a wasted spark coil and you'll see that the the secondary is not grounded okay the, so when we test those we test from one plug to the other plug to get our secondary resistance because the secondary our coil resistance is between the two plugs and the primary we test between our primary lead and ground okay with our primary coil um, so that's testing a, either a, a wasted spark one, again this one, we test between these two wires here, between the two plugs, the red and white one, to test the primary side of the coil, and then we probe between these two. Also keep in mind that, you know, I explained earlier how the wasted spark works, um, and the wasted spark coil works, and because um, each lead relies on each other lead to be its ground, when it's actually sparking, um, that means that if one's not working right, the other won't work right. So if you unplug one spark plug, okay, the other one hasn't got a ground anymore and it won't work either. So you can't test only one. Um, and the other thing about the resistance caps, okay, you've got to take, if you want to measure it properly, you've got to take the resistance caps off and measure the secondary on each side and then measure it across each resistor cap to make sure each resistor cap is the same value because these things can go out in value from each other and then it all goes pear-shaped. I think um, that will do for today because what I'm going to do is um, we're going to get into uh, more complex CDI systems with uh, larger motorcycles and testing those as well. 
and I just thought I'd cover that thing about the testing of the of the basic DC type coil system. But uh, that will do it for now. Um, we'll get on to um, large bike city guy systems later um, because they are battery based systems, DC type CDI.